one of the main things lowering the amount of protein that you consume is actually your sugar intake and potentially even your carbohydrate intake. I have no problem just saying that in the first 10 seconds of this video. Please stick with me because I'm gonna explain how it works, but also a really critical way to get around it. We're gonna talk about some studies, some new literature, and how you kind of get around this problem. And it's interesting because if you talk to like Dr. Mike Isertel, who is a good friend and I love the guy, he talks about how carbohydrates can influence appetite and make you eat more. And that's true. But we see in this American Journal of Clinical Nutrition study that consuming sugar doesn't seem to influence your food intake in a good way. So let's go ahead and break it down. So this study was a 10-week study, and it was humans, and they had subjects consume either sugar or an artificial sweetener. And I'm not a big artificial sweetener guy, okay? But what they found with this, just cutting through the noise and getting to the brass tacks of it, is that those that had the artificial sweeteners maintained their protein intake. And they actually had a pretty low amount of sugar intake and carbohydrate intake. But those that had the sugar, even though everything else was the same, they ended up decreasing their protein intake significantly. And they replaced the protein with more sugar and carbohydrates which I'm not opposed to some carbohydrates, like I'm not that kind of person, but when you're replacing your protein with it, that is hugely problematic. What we're finding with this, based upon a new gastroenterology study, is that the more sugar that you consume, the more of this sucrase isomaltase enzyme that you end up creating. And this enzyme, ultimately makes you consume more sugar because it makes you handle sugar better, but not handle sugar in a good way, like I'm gonna have energy handle it better. For example, what this gastroenterology study had done is it found that people that had a particular variant uh, of the uh, a gene, the SI gene, what they found is that they produced less of the SI enzyme, this enzyme. And as a result, when they had sugar, they didn't need much to get the job done. They had less of this enzyme, so any sugar that they consumed actually triggered a pretty strong release in glucagon-like peptide 1, which is what Ozempic is made from, right? That's the whole idea. So it curbed their appetite. They also found that they had other metabolic changes when they would consume sugar that would allow them to get by with less sugar and not crave sugar more. So the funny thing is, is that I don't care if someone has carbohydrates. I really don't like it when people have sugar, but if it starts impeding the protein intake, then that's a problem. So one of the things that we kind of found within this study is that we need to find ways to slow carb digestion or kind of limit the sugar intake a little bit. One of the ways that I recommend doing that, ironically enough, is through protein, also through fiber, also through various things that are gonna be carb blockers, amylase inhibitors and glucosidase inhibitors, which we'll talk about in just a second. I put a link down below for a shake that I use a lot of times when I'm trying to curb my appetite, like if I'm trying to drop weight or if I'm trying to reduce the amount of food that I intake. It's from Sun Warrior, it's called their Active Line. It is technically a plant-based protein powder. So I know people sometimes have qualms over that, but as someone that eats meat and dairy, I will tell you this is still probably the best, most satiating shake that I have. So it's made with pumpkin seed protein, it has enzymes, it has fiber in it. Of course, it's obviously high in protein. So it's really effective for curbing the appetite. Plus it tastes really darn good. So that link down below, it's a 20% off discount link. You can get 20% off whatever you want from Sun Warrior, but in this particular case, when we're talking about appetite suppression and talking about reducing sugar intake, and being able to increase your protein intake simultaneously, Active Line makes the most sense. So that link, top line in the description for 20% off. I really appreciate you supporting the brands that support this channel. The brands that I have on this channel are brands that I consume personally. So I share my recommendations and we have an opportunity to create content and have them support it, which is a great mix. So that link is down below, top line in the description. So what's really interesting is that people haven't realized that sugar influences GLP-1 in a different way. So I'm gonna come back to GLP-1, and just so you know, GLP-1, again, is what Ozempic is. Like, Ozempic is a GLP-1 receptor agonist, which means that it acts like GLP-1 in the body, making you uh, control your blood sugar and making it so that you have less of an appetite, which is why people lose weight with it. Well, there's a study that was published in Physiology Behavior. This was a rodent model study. What they found is that when they gave mice, like Ozempic or a GLP-1, what happened is it actually reduced their sugar intake, but it didn't reduce their overall regular chow intake, which is interesting 
Because in a human, we do see it reduce intake overall, but maybe the big piece of what it's doing is reducing the sugar intake. But I wanna cut straight to some things that you can do to reduce the sugar. Obviously, we talked about the protein consumption, but we can also talk about things called amylase inhibitors and glucosidase inhibitors. So beans, legumes, berries, fenugreek. If you've ever heard of fenugreek, you can take that in a capsule or fenugreek type tea, okay, that's really potent. Cinnamon is an alpha glucosidase inhibitor. Okay, chestnuts, which is kind of an interesting one. Raspberries, flax seeds, dark grapes, prunes. Okay, so these are a mix of different enzyme inhibitors. So they make it so that carbohydrates actually malabsorb. And when you malabsorb carbohydrates, it means you're not breaking them down into the simple sugars. So what we've learned from this is that the sugar feeds the system to make you want more sugar. And it's not just happening up here like we used to think. So what we're learning from this is that however we can control our carbohydrates in general to break down a little slower and potentially malabsorb so that we don't digest them into simple sugars feeding this enzyme, the better grasp we can get on our sugar cravings. Because what we learned from this gastroenterology study is that it is genetically influenced, but the downstream effect of what the genetic situation is, we could change that from different avenues. So for example, one group of people might have a set of genes that make it already so that they have less of this enzyme and crave less sugar. That doesn't mean that's the only pathway. That just means that's the lucky pathway. That's the lucky pathway where they're born with it, right? But we can get there from this side too. We just have to A, reduce sugar intake. We also have to block some carbohydrates so reduce the downstream sugar intake. And the final thing that you can do is they found in this study that you can increase acetate levels or that consuming sugar would increase acetate levels in those that had the gene variant, ultimately leading to less sugar consumption, yada, yada, yada. In other words, what can you do? Drink things like kombucha, drink things like apple cider vinegar, drink things like the sauerkraut juice or some pickle juice that has some of this acetate in it, okay? Those kinds of things actually can drive up GLP-1 by influencing your brain. Complicated, I've done other videos on it, but acetate seems to be quite potent with this. So it's not just about cutting out sugar, okay? If we're trying to get our protein intake higher we need to be able to reduce the sugar so that we naturally just consume the protein. It makes a big difference, and I know it sounds crazy, but you will consume more protein if you can allocate more calories for that and less for the sugar and the carbs. As always, keep it locked to hear my channel. See you tomorrow.